Hey folks, good evening. Who said Tyler here? Well, you see before me the source of many hot riders' frustration and anger and aggravation and cause to spend extra money they probably don't need to. Uh, yes, that's right. This is a Rochester Quadrajet carburetor. Now, these are a very common carburetor. They came on millions of GM cars and trucks from about 1965 through 1990 and people either love them or they hate them so um, I happen to love them I think they're a very good carburetor um, uh, it's a shame that some people have problems with them but I think uh, the reason a lot of folks have problems with these carburetors is they either just don't want to understand how to adjust them and tune them and maintain them or they just really you know they're Holly guys or they're Carter Carberry guys or they're Edelbrock guys and they just don't want a quarter jet period they've heard too much bad uh, information about them you know they call it a quarter bog they're called quarter junk you know just whatever they're called a lot of bad names but really a lot of this is undeserved um, that's not saying that these carburetors don't have some issues, but uh, I've driven several, several vehicles that have a good running quarter jet on them, and they're great. If they're tuned right and adjusted right, they're just a great carburetor. They get good mileage. Um, they have an awesome airflow potential, and, you know, they're just a very flexible carburetor. So what I thought I would do in this first video is I thought I would just go over a little bit of theory operation of a quarter jet and I'm not going to concentrate too much on the primary side of the quarter jet because it's pretty similar to any other kind of carburetor. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to, I'm going to kind of go in depth on the secondary side of things and that's where people have a lot of problems with these carburetors for very, like I said, for very, for whatever reason. Um, so we're going to go into the theory of operation of a quarter jet and how to identify uh, what's, what's what and then once we get that done we'll go into uh, diagnosing some common issues with these carburetors on the secondary side. Now if you have one that's flooding or something like that or just doesn't run right at all all the time I would suggest that the first thing you do on one of these carburetors is rebuild it, overhaul it. and that you know that may serve to solve those problems and then you can go from there as far as uh, adjusting it okay now here you see in front of me this is just a common mid 70s quarter jet um, I'll show you where to find the number well the first thing we notice on this quarter jet is this is what's called a front entrance quarter jet it's got the fuel filter housing screws into the very front forward part of the carburetor instead of uh, going to the side left and right and uh, uh, Cadillac and Chevrolet were the only ones to use the 90 degree inlet uh, that came out over here Oldsmobile, Buick, Pontiac uh, all use the other versions that you see here and I think this is a Buick carburetor let's just check and see the number on these is found on the left side Okay, back here we see our ID number. This is on the left rear flange of the carburetor vertical rib of it, located adjacent to the linkage. And this one happens to be a 75 Buick carburetor, which I'll make another video about how to decipher these numbers. And this is, of course, this is non-electronically controlled. Those, these quarter jets did not begin being controlled electronically to sometime during the very late 1980 model year you would know it because it has an electrical plug here where this is and an electrical plug here these do not have it so now to begin with I've got a couple different things laid out here to show you I have an air horn this quadrajet is what's called an air valve carburetor and that means that the airflow into the secondaries like here is emitted by these two flaps on the top of the air horn which is called which is called the air doors so uh, these this is not a vacuum secondary carburetor 
Uh, it's totally different. So anything you know about Hollies, just throw out the window on these because it does not relate. So let's start exploring this thing and I'll show you what's what. First of all, let's look at this carburetor and you'll see the bottom of it. You'll see we have two small primary bores and we have two quite a bit larger secondary bores. And this is what's called a spread bore carburetor um, because of this configuration. It means that uh, you know it kind of spreads out at the rear to, around these barrels, back barrels. And this is not the only kind of spread bore carburetor. There's also a couple auto light carburetors. I think a 40, uh, might have been a 4350. I think that's a spread bore. I'm not quite 100%, but I do know that a, uh, uh, what is it, the Carter Thermoquad is also a spread bore carburetor. So small bore front and large bore rear, that's a spread bore. And if it had just four small bores on it, that's what's called a square bore because if you, described a line around all four of those barrels it would be a square. Um, most Hollies and the world famous much loved Edelbrock Performer Carburetor which is basically a repackaged Carter, a very old design. Those are all square bores. Um, the very early Rochester four barrels preceding the Quadrajet were also square bores. So. Now, of course, like I said, I just mentioned, this is the primary. This is what it runs off most of the time where my thumb is here. Those. So that gives it the small, see how small these bores are. During part throttle cruise, this gives a very good fuel economy and it gives good throttle response because small bores like this increase air velocity and fuel mixture velocity. So it's very responsive. It makes for a nice, nicely driving vehicle. And then when you punch it, it opens these back barrels up and that's when the fun begins. So, up here we have our throttle linkage and this one has been, it's had part of this removed. I didn't do this, I don't think. I don't, I don't think I've ever used this car right here. This is your throttle linkage. And you'll notice there's a rod extending to the rear back here. And it goes around makes a turn to this piece that's mounted to the back, back, back throttle blade back here, the rear one, and comes up and back here it contacts that same piece. It's a pretty neat little design. And you also notice that there's a spring here. And why that is, is this arrangement here that my finger is pointing at is not uh, connected to this throttle blade um, directly, which means it's not fast. Which means that this assembly can move backwards to try to open this back throttle blade, but it's just going to wrap the spring. It doesn't necessarily open this bottom set of blades, the secondary. Now that can cause problems, but there's a reason for that. Um, I'll show you why. Why that is, is because, especially on these later model carburetors, let's go around to the right side of the carburetor and you'll see the automatic choke assembly, which I'm going to cover in another video. But look right down here. Get my thumb out of the way. Look what's going on right here. This is the rear throttle blade, secondary throttle blade shaft. See this pin that's coming out of here? All right. See, there's a piece of linkage coming off this choke, which prevents this, uh, the secondary from opening when the choke is engaged like it is now. You see the throttle blade, the choke blade up here is closed. So the reason GM did that is to keep it just basically to keep you from trying to open all four barrels up when it was cold. Uh, it doesn't necessarily, you know, whether it's hard on the engine or not, that's not the question. It's just that... Uh, it was mainly for emissions because this was this was during the time of a lot of emissions controls and things like that. So they just didn't want you dumping a lot of extra gas into the converter and things like that. So anytime this is engaged, like it is right here, 
this will not let the throttle blades back here and open up the secondaries will not open you can stomp it and stomp it and stomp it and it will not kick the four barrel in so okay I'm going to continue with the theory of operation on these so what happens when you open the throttle blade crack it all the way you wide open throttle this thing then it open them if everything's working correctly it's going to crack open those big throttle blades on the bottom all the way open it's closed now but it'll be all the way open and then when that happens it's going to create a negative pressure inside this back venturi so it's going to open these flaps up okay that emits the air in of course you can see they open pretty far but there's a there's more than just this going on with this procedure back here i'll show you what ha actually happens now when this opens up this is you'll notice here there's a piece that's got a screw in it see how this moves when this opens up well let's go to this already disassembled air horn over here that I showed you earlier this one has this present this is called a hanger assembly let me see if I can operate this with my finger and hold the camera too there you go see when this these throttle blades crack open it lifts this up well look what's going on on the bottom what we have down here on the other side of this we have these are called secondary metering rods and these hang down into the fuel bowl right here normally they are way down in these secondary uh, orifice here so there's next to no fuel flowing ability to even flow up the secondaries. So what happens is when you kick the four barrel in and this air horn starts to open up, it starts to lift these rods out. And you notice how these rods are tapered the further down they go. So starts out that they're riding about right here. It's nice and thick. There's hardly any gas able to flow through past them and then as they raise up it starts getting narrow and narrow and narrow and then when this thing is at wide open throttle it's at the very power tip end of these that's what's called a power tip see how narrow that is if you have this up there in that bore you can see that that's going to emit a whole lot of fuel so what happens is when this starts going on it starts letting fuel flow from the bowl here through those ports we'll just call them ports and up these passageways that you see right here and these tubes get my camera backed up just so not the two metal ones we won't, we're not going to just four you'll see four tubes here we're not going to we're not going to pay attention to the two innermost we're going to talk about the two uh, large ones these are called the secondary fuel tubes, pickup tubes. And they do just that. They fit down in these passageways right here. And when it's trying to pick the fuel up, they come right up through these tubes on each side, one on each side. And then look right back here. You'll see on both these quad jets, uh, they come out right here. And course the flap is open so that negative air pressure and vacuum signal is pulling that fuel down into the secondary so that's how a quarter jet feeds fuel into the engine with the secondary side it's really simple but there's a few things that can go wrong with it and like I said there's sometimes there are just things that just happen to the carburetor and then there, sometimes there's it's because that somebody, excuse my language, has just tried to work on it and fucked it up. So uh, I'm going to 
show you in the next video we're going to look at some common problems on these and how to fix them stay tuned